The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Okay, the first thing we're going to take a look at is the astronaut of the futures industry, which is the DAX index. As you can see, uh, it had a monster move. I mean, these are uh, these are big moves over there in the DAX, folk. And as you can see on the second chart that we posted, uh, we completed another ABCD pattern. However, this one was above the 78% level. Uh, today it gapped up and it's just been uh, treading water uh, since that time. Pretty much like what we have. I think most people are, are shocked that the Dow, the Dow went above 20,000 has actually stayed there. Uh, on Monday, we are going to have a special guest. Uh, Norm Winsky is asked to come on to talk to us about the influence of this new moon that we have coming in tomorrow. The influence starts today, yesterday, today, tomorrow, and of course through the weekend it will be uh, it, it will be in vogue, I would think. But he would like to chat with us about that. He has some interesting things uh, to look at from the cycle spot, so we want to keep a very close eye on that. Whenever markets make new highs or make new lows, the things that I follow each day is I watch the open interest on what's happening in the futures markets. The open interest is the number of traders that you have. For every long, there has to be a short and for every short, there has to be a long. So uh, this is how you determine technical analysis because, you know, if prices go up, there's more buyers. If prices go up, there's more sellers. So we'll take a quick look here. I just wanted to give you an example of what's going on here. As you can see, when we have uh, rising and rising uh, prices and rising, uh, that's a very, very strong market. If, if the price is rising, and open interest and open interest is falling. That's a weak market. Now let's take a look. Let's take a look at uh, a market that that has done this in the past. Okay, we we did this once before many years ago. I'm sure many of you can, can go back to April of 2011. And what we're going to do here, hopefully, <laughs> is take a look here at the uh, silver market. This was silver and gold. It didn't make any difference which one you were looking at. They were both doing exactly the same thing. You could see the meteoric run. We, we, we doubled in price in silver uh, from January to April. We doubled, uh, we doubled in price. And the last week, that last week, every single day, the uh, price was rising, but open interest was dropping. That means short covering. And that once the, the last short has covered, there's no buyers left, and it leaves a vacuum, as you can see what's going on. Now, why did I bring this to your attention today? Is because we have two things that you folks trade a lot that is showing the same similarities. And even yesterday, with the absolute explosive move above 20,000 in the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones uh, E-mini contract lost open interest. Folks, that's short covering. That's not a bullish sign. And also the NASDAQ, E-mini NASDAQ, also lost open interest. That's also not a good sign. Of course, it goes straight up, but that's because the last shorts are covering, supposedly. Now, this is all theoretical, but this is the books that uh, they write about open interest, and it's a very important thing to watch. So keep an eye on that. Plus, we have this new moon you know, coming in that's going to be a big one. We have the Chinese. New Year, which will be very interesting. We got a lot of things happening, boys and girls, today. Uh, one of them is, of course, what we've been waiting for a while, and that is, hold on just a second here, uh, that is the gold market. We're going to pull up here to take a look. We were watching this yesterday, and of course, here we are coming in today, and we'll be able to look at this. You'll see that uh, we were able to uh, get to this level. Um, hold on, we'll bring it up so we can see it again. You'll see where we are. 
you'll notice that we came uh, we, we came within one dollar of the price we were looking at 1184 we got to 1185 we're trading around 1190 right now but at that price you have this nice ABCD you're 34 dollars down which is the harmonic number you're at 78 percent retracement of the January low and uh, it's also a 1.618 expansion of the last rally so Keep a close eye on that. Also, if you take a look at what silver's done, silver actually gives a little clearer picture this morning because with silver, you have a clear ABCD pattern uh, coming in at that 1670. We've already rallied uh, 20 cents an ounce uh, from that level, but it was a nice ABCD pattern. But what's interesting about it is that, in fact, it took 10 days. Uh, to make that correction, to, and that was at the 382 level, at uh, you know the 1672 level. So, uh, might not hold this level, of course, but it's something that we want to pay attention to because I, if if silver and gold turn out and take out the highs now, grab a horse, tie on your saddle, put your spurs on, and let that puppy ride because it's going to run. I don't know what it's going to cause it if it does that, but uh, this is going to be one bullish chart if it does that. Um, so whether it does it or not, we'll have to see. Uh, we'll have to see if it works uh, in that direction. We've got a couple others that are interesting today that people have uh, asked about. Uh, one we were talking, or I was listening to John Logan uh, talk about the copper market, and as you can see here, uh, over the past several weeks we've been following a potential triple top here in the uh, copper market so far that's what's happened we've uh, not been able to get above this two dollars and 72 cents a pound level but we could at any time uh, so keep an eye on that remember copper and gold are they're they're totally different things one's an industrial metal the other it well gold is industrial somewhat but it's more of a precious metal so they they run on different cycles for sure used to be Dr. Copper. As the market goes, so goes copper. And as you can see, copper's had one heck of a rally along with the rest of the, the stock market as we've gone through uh, some of these things. Okay, now, uh, one or two, we got one other market that looks real interesting here, and it, we're at real critical levels in both of these folks. Uh, this is the uh, four-hour chart of the Treasury note. And as you can see, we made the 61% uh, retracement perfectly here from the uh, 15th of December. Uh, that's also an ABCD pattern. So we need to, the, the notes should hold this 123.19 level if they're going to be good. But uh, it's going to be very interesting because it's right at the spot on spot. And if we take a look at the, uh, I don't think the Fed makes any difference anymore, Mr. P, because it, uh, they played all the cards they had. Well, they may got more cards, I guess. Okay, we're going to see here. You can see here with the the uh, bonds, uh, we've gone below the 61% retracement, but the ABCD structure says that we should get down to this uh, 48 148.20 level. So, anything below these levels, folks, that we're looking at, I want to want you to show you why it's so very important. And if you'll take a quick look here, uh, over the last several months, this is a daily chart of the Treasury bonds. And I just wanted to let you get a quick idea. You can see from the high in November, the election night, you can see what happens. The bonds collapsed. They went from 165 down to 147. They rallied perfectly to a 382 retracement. Um, and now what we're doing is if we go below these levels that we just talked about, 147 in the bonds, you're looking at another nine handles down to the 1.618 at 136. This is a bear market, folks. No question about it. Rates are going higher. The stock market loves higher rates. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the pre 
premier market profile based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and some of the folks here in the Tiger Den are chatting, and they brought the name of Paul Tudor Jones up. I'm sure most of you know he runs Tudor Investments. He's been one of the most successful people over the last 30-some years. Uh, one of my favorite quotes, uh, he was interviewed in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, this was back in 1988, uh, after the bonds had bottomed during the 87 crash. And uh, the reporter said to him, Paul, he said, it must be wonderful to know that you picked the exact low of the Treasury bonds uh, to see this tremendous 13-point move happen so quickly. Doesn't that give you a lot of, uh, of uh, gratitude or, you know, feeling of gratitude and everything? And, and Paul Tudor Jones says, actually, he said, that's not the way it should be reported. And the reporter says, what do you mean? And he said, well, it should say, Paul Tudor Jones picked the exact day of the bottom in the Treasury bond market preceding a fantastic rally after he had been wrong the previous six times. So that just tells you that, you know, someday it's chicken salad and someday it's chicken poop. It depends on how you mix it. So be sure that uh, you use a stop. Sometimes you're going to make money. Sometimes you're going to lose money, but you're going to be okay. If you've ever had a chance to watch his video, The Trader, you really should watch that because uh, I watched this young man grow up. I happened to be a friend of Eli Tellis and his son, Eli Jr., and Eli was the fellow who gave him the job in Memphis. They were family friends. Uh, Tudor's father is an attorney, and so we'll see what <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, let's lighten up here a bit. We got to keep this serious. Okay. Anyway, watch this. Uh, these are private messages that send me that people put on, folks, and catch me by surprise. Anyway, the chart that I posted in here is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and what's really amazing about it, folks, it was really spectacular to watch this because the Dow actually gapped 
to 220,000. It's not it, the, the actual low on the day, which was a fast low, which was a fast low means it was a quick tick, was at 19,994. That was one quarter of a point higher, not even a full point, higher than the previous high, and it gapped above that, and of course, it went another 60 point higher. Now, what we're going to do from this level is going to be very, very interesting, because we have some cycle stuff coming in here, and our good friend uh, Norm Winsky will be talking about this to us on uh, Monday, and we will wait and hear what he has to say. But anyway, if you take a look at that, there's a big gap up here, and people are saying it's a breakaway gap. And is that a possibility? Of course it's a possibility. I do believe when you're looking at the longer term picture, uh, you know, you could see something like this. Occurring. Let me share with you one of the charts that uh, one of our folks here at Tiger TV uh, sent to me last night. This is the really long term. You'll see the high in 1929 and then the collapse into 1932. It makes the Great Depression look like it didn't even happen. You can see the long period of time when we went from 19, um, you know, 36 through 1948, where we're in this really strong trading range. Folks, if you would have bought a house in Beverly Hills uh, in August of 19, August or September of 1929, you had to hold that house for 37 years before it got back to the to the original price. And you should say, but look what it's done since that time. Well, you can see here the run-ups that we've had in these long periods uh, of consolidation. So it's important to remember that all these things occur. I think the most interesting one, of course, was that 23-year period between 1965 and 1983, where the Dow had had a high of 1,100. Can you believe that? We're saying 1,100, and here it is at 20,000. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Now we have a possibility, but the pattern that you're seeing here at the very end is a lot different than these other patterns because you can see it has an expanding triangle tied up to it. But whether that's going to mean anything or not, you know, we'll have to be able to see what's going on. Remember that this move in the Dow Jones is really uh, being accomplished by uh, about 16 stocks, but the rest of the stocks are not doing too bad either. Let's just take a look here. Uh, just just take a look here at the NASDAQ here uh, over the, since the election night. This is going to be interesting uh, for you folks to take a look at that because you'll see that we had this uh, big move on election night. Uh, and now we've completed, you know, the ABCD patterns up here. We, we got up last night. Uh, we reached just a tad above the 1.618 level by about uh, five points. Whether that means much or not, I don't know. But you're seeing the same thing in some of the other indices that are also uh, important to watch. If we look at the uh, S&P 500 here, which has a really interesting one, you can see here that we've also left this this big gap here uh, after this ABCD pattern, and you'll see it. What you don't see here, folks, is that November that November 7th low. Uh, that does the market. The SPY was closed during that time, and so you don't get to uh, you don't get to see the impetus uh, that you had uh, because of that. And that's what's uh, I think so uh, so very very important. Watch it very closely because it's going to be uh, real interesting you know, to see uh, what's going on. And if we take a look, of course, at the E-mini S&P, we'll pull this up here, let you take a look at it to see what it's doing. And we'll watch here. You'll see that we're really close up here around this 2300 uh, level. We have a real interesting uh, 1.618 expansion. We got to uh, 2398 uh, last night, whether that means much or not. I don't know, but uh, we got a lot of things happening. We got gold, treasury bonds, I mean, just so many things uh, going on, which is what you like to see because it makes it uh, very, very interesting. Now, let's get switch over here. If we got a chance here uh, to take a look at the U.S. dollar, and we're going to start out by looking at the euro, which uh, encompasses, uh, you know, 48% of the U.S. dollar, and you'll see here that uh, over since December the 5th, 
Last night, uh, again, we rallied up to a 78% retracement. That was the fourth time that we've been there over the past uh, four days. Uh, and you have to ask yourself, is it important? Is it resistance or is it support? And I put a notation here that my guess was it was going to be resistance. And the reason for that is that the longer-term trend in this is uh, so prevalent to the downside, in other words, that we should get to 100 in the euro, that that's it. However, if we get above this 108 level, folks, that is going to be uh, very, very bullish. Now, th even though this market is bearish, you know, it's had some monster rallies. It's rallied 15 points several times. So 15 points from 103 could take you uh, to 118 in the euro, and it would still be very bearish. So those are the main things that we look at. Now, we had a question here uh, about Google. We're going to bring it up and take a look at it. Here we're going to see here, we're going to see very similar pattern. Uh, boy, this has got to be one of the great, great, great companies. You know, stop and think they put the libraries out of business with all the stuff that they have. You'll see that the Google is lining up. It also has a three drive to a top pattern uh, as well as the butterfly pattern up in this area. And we should see this because uh, it is one of the premier uh, stocks that we look at. And again, we want to take another one. Hold on and take a look at this. We'll take a look at the Amazon because this has been a bullish stock. We were looking at this quite a few days ago. You made a perfect Gartley down there uh, at the uh, 748 level. And now we've had this uh, huge rally here in the uh, Amazon. So we'll... Uh, this tells us we're going out. Take a little break here, 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. 
Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I've posted the chart of the euro, uh, giving you a little bit better idea over the last uh, – uh, several days, you can see how many times it went up to that uh, 10770 level, which was the 78% level. We've now backed off uh, 100 pips from the high, uh, another 50 pips lower, which will be the harmonic number uh, in the euro, will be very, very critical support. And uh, you, you'll be able to see that in the uh, U.S. dollar index that we're going to show here in just a second. But what I'd like to do here is to switch over and talk a little bit about the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index. Uh, yesterday, folks, we gapped above the 1.618 level and for this thing to leave a gap unfilled gap is pretty uh, pretty uh, unusual so we'll watch this very very closely and if you look at this uh, well we'll look at this a little closer on Monday but you'll you'll notice that we do have a three drive to a top pattern uh, that is also forming at this level so uh, I personally feel that there's going to be this gap be filled but you know maybe it's not maybe this is the bottom that uh, you know, takes us to uh, 35,000 in the Dow or whatever, whatever number it's going to look at. So we'll we'll keep an eye on uh, that as we look at it. Now we'll switch over here to the dollar index a little bit because this is related to this euro that we're watching. Uh, and if you'll pay particular attention uh, to the cycles that we're looking at in here, you'll notice that we're over some pretty interesting cycles here, which is related to this lunar cycle, of course. Uh, but we are at major support here at this uh, 99 and change level. But greater support comes in here at this 98.10 level. This would mean that the euro would break out of this level of 108 and head to the 110 level. That would get the dollar index down to this level and then we'll see it but until this happens we've just re we've just had a one month correction in the dollar index from the 1.27 level uh, you can see up there it would hit it one two three four different times at that 10350 level and then uh, has had the pretty good correction folks if we ever get above 104 in this dollar index th this is going to be a major 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 game changer because the dollar index at one time uh, well, about two decades ago uh, we were trading about uh, 165 so that's what we'd be looking at a retracement of that would take the dollar index up to that 135 level and boy you you talk about u.s goods being expensive you're you're going to see uh what it could be remember we have uh, Theresa may the prime minister from the united kingdom will be here talking to uh, uh the president so that'll be uh, uh very interesting and you know they're not going to have bad news you know you can uh you can bet your um sweet bippy on that one you know what i'm saying that's pretty much uh what uh, what's what's happening? So let's move on. Okay, two things. One is we did make uh, new all-time lows yesterday uh, in the VIX index, and uh, much to my surprise, but I'm surprised a lot. And you'll notice here that we did go down. Uh, we've got some smaller cycles that are in here, but but frankly, uh, you know, we have made new lows. Which, uh, for a longer-term basis, uh, you know, I guess because the market's so high, you have to expect that because nobody thinks a correction's coming now, folks. That's not that is impossible that a correction could ever occur. We can just about, you know, write that in the book. And if we look at the long-term picture uh, of the VIX index and to see how uh, how far down it is, I mean, it's really uh, it's really an amazing thing here because you'll see that uh, you'll be taking a look at this, that we've had a pretty good interesting uh, move here uh, in this uh, index because it's made new lows here uh, just recently. You can see some of the swings that we've had here that are absolutely um, <laughs> amazing, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, it's a surprise index. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You know, we'll keep a quick eye 
close eye on it just to make sure what's going on. Let's just check the uh, prices here of what we're looking at here. We're having a nice little rally here back in the NASDAQ and a little bit in the S&P here early this morning. We'll see what happens. We've got crude oil approaching the uh, $54 a barrel level. That's going to be interesting. Uh, one other one now, we're, we're pulling back down in the gold. Watch the gold here at this 1184, 1185 level. That should be pretty good support. You don't have to risk a lot there. I would say if you're going to watch it, uh, because if this were a Friday, uh, I would certainly do it because of the of the new moon. But the, frankly, you're right at the new moon area here right now, so you should be able to, uh, you know, line that up with a with some timing stuff. But this is some interesting things that are happening here, in a lot of these things: gold, silver, uh, you know, the treasury bonds, treasury notes, stock market. I mean, there's the the currencies. There's just a lot of things uh, that are happening. So we want to uh, watch this uh, very, very closely as we as we go through the morning to look at it. The British pound. The British pound has had some uh, pretty pretty wild swings in here. We want to bring this up because of the fact that the prime minister is going to be here tomorrow. That will be uh, bringing in some new. And all I got to do now is to find my British pound tree. Oh boy. What did I list it at? Okay, not going to worry about it. I'll have to find it another time and see what's going to happen. Okay, not to worry. All righty. Let's. Uh, oh, someone's asked to uh, talk about uh, the possibility of this gold market. I think that's a good thing to do. Let's just look here at the gold here on the. Uh, this is where we were at the beginning of the week. And if you'll bear with me here one second, we'll get this long term gold chart here. And you'll, you'll see here that uh, this is what we're possibly looking at. We've had that first correction that came in last December at 1030 per ounce. We then rallied $383 an ounce, uh, $353 an ounce. And now we are pulled back to the 78% retracement, had a rally from there of $90 an ounce. And now we want to see if this 382 retracement is going to hold, because if it does, and gold turns from here. Uh, this is uh, this is going to be a big one, folks. Uh, but it has to do all of those things, and to say that it's uh, going to do that is pretty tough to uh, do sometimes. So we want to keep that one also uh, on our on our top burner to what's going on in some of these markets. Um, so we've had a question uh, about the uh, long-term implications of that big chart that I uh, put out there uh, showing the stocks from 1900. I'll put this back again. The question is, what will be the targets on some of these? Well, if you just take a look at it, if it just did a major move uh, similar to what we were looking at before, you would be looking at a minimum of about uh, 30,000 in the Dow. That would be the, the minimum that you would be looking at. And uh, we will wait and see if it gets to that point. We've got a lot of things uh, happening right now that are that are very near some of these really, really key levels, but whether they hold or not, you know, we're going to have to uh, to wait and see. Uh, one of the markets that's been uh, been a big benefit of these markets has been the Chinese market here. We'll take a quick look at this one. You'll notice here that the uh, Chinese market has rallied up here to this uh, uh, 36780 uh, level and uh, there again you've got a potential 135 pattern but the markets were pretty bullish bullish last night and of course the uh, Hang Seng index was up about 300 points too taking it up to that uh, uh, 23,000 and change level that we had been watching uh, you know for quite some time but we'll wait and see we have to take a little break here 877-927-6648 Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour. Following the Tom O'Brien Show, Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with host Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Okay, folks, I uh, had a request from one of our listeners in Hong Kong to take a look at the Hang Seng Index. As you can see, we made that beautiful ABCD pattern down there at the 21,500 level. Uh, what we've done now is, uh, as you can see, uh, you don't see the overnight market here because it hasn't updated yet because of the difference in time. We went to the 22,000 uh, 300 level, 23,300 level, with it, with it being up almost 300 points last night. And that would uh, complete that small three drive pattern up above that 78% uh, percent level. So that's another one on the international scale that looks very interesting. Most of these markets, of course, were pulled up uh, by our market which is uh, not unusual because that's where most things usually happen. Now, here's one that we really, uh, that it just defies all logic, and this is the crude oil market. We've got a pipeline coming in that's going to be bringing in more and more oil. Uh, we have made a top here three and a half weeks ago in crude oil. We were able to back off about 10% from 55 down to $51 a barrel. And since that time, we've been in this really tight trading range. No, we couldn't even make a 382 retracement. Uh, of this last move, folks, that is that's really hard to believe. So, what we're looking at right now at this $54 per barrel level is we're seeing a bearish Gartley forming, of course. But the one thing that is uh, a very, very apparent that if we get any strength above the $55 barrel level, we would be looking at that $64 barrel level that our good friend from uh, Vienna, Austria, Bill Meridian from Cycles Research which shows that that's what his goal is 
for uh, crude oil for 2017. And it could still be very, very bearish and yet still, you know, make that retracement. Because you can see we came from $35 a barrel last April. Uh, and look where we are. You can see the patterns that we've had. We had two perfect 78% retracements, uh, one at, in August at uh, $39 a barrel. We had another 78% retracement at $42 a barrel. And since that time, the market has not backed off. That would be interpreted as a potential very, very bullish. But we need to get it above this 5450 level, and then it would, you know, break this Gartley pattern, and, and you would be looking at for something more of a breakout. But the fact that it's able to do that so far is uh, very uh, amazing, in my opinion. So these are things that we uh, are watching as we go through these charts uh, each day. Now, uh, another one that uh, someone's asked me to talk about is the. Um, S and P, excuse me, the Dow E mini. If you give me one second here, I want to bring it up and show you the Dow E mini here because you're going to see a really interesting chart because you talk about how it relates to uh, news. If you take a look at this Dow E mini chart, this is a daily going back to February. That's when we were extremely bullish because we had that big A B C D down there. Uh, and then look at look at the Brexit, the one in uh, the Brexit low. Uh, came in at the 382 retracement. Look at the low on election night when the Dow was down 860 points, I believe, making it the biggest drop in uh, in points in history, not in percentage, but in points. Uh, that was right at a, a 707, just a little below the 61% retracement. And now we've exploded to the upside above the 20,000 level. So these are some of the things that uh, look interesting, you know, from some of these these charts uh, uh, from a different one. Now, if we take a look, uh, we have one other request here, and then we can do some other things. This is the um, one we were looking at yesterday that was happening right at the market open, and that was the um, Russell. 2000, uh, the small cap. And as you can see here, we were looking for potential if the market did not gap higher. But at that time, we already knew that was going to happen, that it was going to gap above the 137 level, which would have broken this uh, 135 pattern. So had you sold this at 136 and changed the night before, you would have been getting out of that at the opening because, uh, you know, the, the pattern was no longer functional. You'll notice that the pattern that we had during December and January was spot on, 135, and we're still making lower highs ever since uh, uh, December the uh, 10th. So this market is still basically in a downtrend. It's one of the few, but it is. And that was the one that led us up, folks. That was the one that uh, was the uh, the big one. Now, the one thing was we had a really big, uh, interesting thing um, to look at uh, on the um, – the IBB, if you remember, uh, I don't have the chart. I've lost it. But the IBB, which had been the, the leader, has been really, uh, really, really very small. So I, I mean, it has had virtually no rally and still in a, a pretty strong downtrend. But that's, uh, that's neither uh, here nor there as we go through uh, some of these charts and look at. One other I wanted to mention here from one of our friends here in Las Vegas, Nevada, who follows this stock. Mr. TB, and I hope you're listening today. We'll pull this up. This is the chart of Qualcomm. And uh, if you'll see here, you will notice that uh, we uh, made a 20 man line, came in exactly at the 61% retracement. Now, this stock was actually up $2 and a half yesterday at uh, 56 and change. It's now trading back below uh, 54. Five, I believe, because bad earnings came out. So it's testing this number one more time at the $54 uh, a barrel level. Because if we get below a barrel, whoa, let's try that again. $54 a share level, because if we get below that again, then that's telling you that this gap that we had down on uh, just two days ago is very, very important, and that means that it'll be uh, be very, very interesting to see, you know, how some of these things actually, uh, you know, work out. Okay, we we'll take a look here. Not much is going on here. We'll see how our gold is holding up. 
I've really got an interest in this gold because it's got a chance here to do something uh, pretty interesting if it can do it. And therein is the $64 question is whether it can do it or not. And we'll, we'll go from this level here and see what happens. For the euro, has bounced a little bit, but uh, it's only down 100 points. It really needs to get down to about the 106.40 uh, level. That, that's when it would look pretty interesting from a standpoint of, um, you know, of really a good buy. So that's the other one. Um, I'm watching the crude oil very, very closely because this level of uh, 54.10 is uh, extremely important. And we've had a pretty good move, you know, out of this level. And then we'll be able to... Uh, to see how this uh, how this thing lines up uh, for the rest of the day. All righty, now we had one other question, and that is about the silver. I thought I covered that, but I'll do it again. I still think silver looks really interesting. Uh, you'll, you'll, I'll just bring it up to show you because I, this is to me is very important because it took 10 days for silver to make the. You know, this is the bad part about this, folks. You know, one of the things when you look at these things, you you see a pattern, and that automatically puts in a bullish bias or not. And you should allow the pattern to tell you whether you're bullish or not. When you look at this silver chart, and think about it for a minute, you can see we've had higher lows uh, all the time here uh, since uh, the 20th of December. We've had higher highs. So we're in a short-term uptrend on the 60-minute chart. This is the first really major correction that we've had. It's taken 10 days from the 18th of uh, January to the 26th. That's what, nine trading days. Yeah, five, tra five yeah, that's right. So we ten, ten, nine calendar days uh, to uh, get to this level. So this is where we should turn here. Now let's take a break, finish up the show and move on. 877-927-6648. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. 
Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I would like to urge you folks that trade the stock indices to, uh, at the end of the day today, go to, should do this every day, as a matter of fact, go to the CME.com, Chicago Mercantile Exchange.com, and all you have to do is to click on their data, and then you just go from your data down to your open interest, and your open interest will show you whether it's increasing or decreasing, and if prices go up, and open interest drops, that is a very bearish phenomenon. In fact, if you start seeing open interest dropping from these levels, it means that people are, living, are, are leaving the market, both longs and short. Uh, that is not a, a bullish uh, situation, but of course it could change dramatically. But I would suggest you look at that because we've seen drops in open interest in the New York, excuse me, in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and also uh, E-mini, of course, and the e-mini Nasdaq, both of those have had drops in open interest when the market uh, was going up. And remember, we're going we're going to have Norm Winsky on on Monday. I hope to have Bill Meridian on this week coming, and also Rich Anderson. And then later in the following week, we hope to have Shane Smolian on uh, again, and also uh, Arch Crawford. And then also our good friend from Thornton, Colorado, Dr. Al Larson, one of the smartest people I've ever met. We're going to try to get Al back uh, to talk to us about uh, some of these lunar cycles and some of the artificial intelligence things that he does. Uh, we've left a gap in the Dow Jones Industrial Average at 20,000. So it's going to be very interesting to see what's happened. The Dow is actually uh, at almost at uh, 20,100 this morning. Uh, it's got to, uh, it's trading right now at 20,092. So there's a 100-point gap there. Actually, the gap is from t uh, 1994 to where it is right now. There's a 100-point gap. Whether it gets, gets filled in our lifetime or not uh, remains to be seen. So keep a uh, close look on some of these. Mainly watch the gold, the treasury bonds. Those are the ones that look uh, very, very interesting from this level. So uh, that's what I would suggest you take a look at. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.